in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our service on this first Sunday after Trinity, a celebration of the Eucharist and also a celebration of our union with Christ and our redemption along with all of creation. Would you please be seated? We are called by the scriptures to be conscious of the fact that though part of Christ's body, the growth into the image of Christ is a long and mind-changing and heart-rending process. For human sin disfigures the whole of creation, which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. Therefore, we confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please remain seated as we hear words of wisdom from the Scriptures? Our first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 18 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. O song of ascents, out of the depth I cry to you, O Lord. Hear my voice, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? 
but there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those more than those who want O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Our New Testament reading is from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, from verse 13 through chapter 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak. will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the Lord of God, to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, for what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowd came together again, so that Jesus and his companions could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called out to them, and, they, and he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mothers, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Let's start, almost at least, at the very beginning. 
it's a very good place to start. When you sin, you begin with, well, a very familiar story from the book of Genesis. A story that tries to give form and narrative uh, a kind of shape that we can engage with to the question of how we can reconcile God's goodness and the intended goodness of all creation with human fault. A story that's probing the origins of our inheritance of lies and violence and betrayal, of lust and envy and blame, all of which follow in the next couple of chapters of Genesis. A story that seeks out the roots of human disobedience towards God, or of the first seeds, perhaps sown, of human wisdom also, and self-knowledge that somehow divides us one from each other and one from God. The story right at the heart of the book of Genesis is a myth in this truest sense, meaning that it explores imaginatively and through character and narrative a search for meaning in our lives today. And we know the story well. But today, what strikes a shocking blow to me is its depiction of the human response to God's presence and to God's call at the heart of the garden to Adam, to the man who was formed of the red clay of the earth. God's there. God is present in the heart of his creation. And God calls and questions the one he has made and the one he has given life, and the one he has given a gift of his spirit in giving him life. And the human response is to do violence to another. To blame the woman, to blame the snake, to deny fault, and to betray the rest of the created world. The man's response is to live in half lies and the dishonest passing off of blame to others. And that creates, in the story, a divine penalty. This penalty is imposed for all these half lies and ends up in the passing on of pain to generation upon generation of the seed of woman. These come out of a new self-awareness within the story that Adam gains through eating from the tree of which he was forbidden to eat. A new awareness of vulnerability, and actually it's very appropriate that he becomes aware in the first moments of the story of his nakedness and he becomes aware of his vulnerability and he becomes aware of the risk to him of death. It's almost as though Adam's fearful and selfish response to God's presence and God's questioning is rooted in that understanding of his own vulnerability, in that desire to escape punishment to which he suddenly realizes he is vulnerable. To pretend that he is not at fault, to pretend that he is not the one who is vulnerable to God's presence, and to defend his own innocence, even if that too is pretended, even though he is losing its privilege at the expense of his blame of others. The crucifixion is perhaps the supreme example of human vulnerability taking something of a model from Adam's own nakedness, for it almost certainly would have occurred with Jesus Christ naked and ashamed and vulnerable and hurt and filled with pain. And yet, it was not something hidden from God's eyes. It was shared with the divine without any shame at all. It was done in this way so that all the violence of the world and all the vulnerability of the human race could be placed openly in God's sight. 
And to be crucified in weakness meant that Jesus embodied human vulnerability at its most vulnerable level. He was a strong man, our strong man, who was willing to be bound, willing to give up all his strength in suffering, willing to do all this so that we who are witnesses of his resurrection and we who participate in a shared hope too in that resurrection, that we'll be raised and transformed as he is, can be weak in him. If we realize that, and if we enter into that awareness and acceptance of our vulnerability as humans, we're starting to move towards our very end, being right at the beginning of the human story. That's a good place to start, and also a good place to return toward. In our resurrection hope, we return to this great mythic theme of all creation's eternal intended goodness and value being held in God's sight, being elevated by the presence of God within it, being changed and transformed by God's call to it. In a very famous sermon, C.S. Lewis talked, spinning fairy tales and yarns out of this new and restored hope of old creation. And he did that in 1942, at the height of the Second World War, when all hope really seemed to have gone out of the world. That sermon, The Weight of Glory, was preached in Oxford, and it described God's glory lying hidden, hidden from wisdom, hidden from goodness, hidden within clay jars, as Paul goes on to say in his second letter to the Corinthians, and hidden in people who seem every day and ordinary and perhaps even ugly and unappealing, but who, if we could see them as God does, if we could think of them as God does in their potential, we would come to believe were like gods and goddesses and fairy powers walking among us. More practically, beyond this sense that creation had a weight of glory and a beauty that God was calling out of it through the resurrection, C.S. Lewis also described the realization that he had experienced, that we could be seen as God as a really important, loved part of his creation. Beyond those things which layer upon layer build up on top of our true humanity, our true humanity as revealed in the goodness of Jesus Christ. Things like divisiveness and shame and deceit. C.S. Lewis said, that an awareness of this deeper reality of human existence underneath layers of grime can slowly be strengthened so that myths and self-delusions can all be transformed into a full-hearted, full-throated belief that we can be delighted in and can delight in the presence of God. However we decide and believe that we are divided from others, However, we need to cover up the source of our vulnerability or our shame from their sight. However, we want to mistreat them and exploit them and lie to them and hurt them. The goodness of God's creation is seen by God in the face of Jesus Christ. And it can be seen also in his image in us also. It can be seen in love in participation in the life of Christ, in vulnerability, in participation in his crucifixion, in the awareness of our potential to share in his glory, in the hope of his resurrection. And in all those things, we find our ending, back at the beginning of all things, responding in a garden that's growing and flourishing 
to God's presence and to his call. Would you please stand as you're able to declare your faith in the God who walks among us and the God who calls us to be transformed into our true nature? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. To the bidding, Lord, we call on you. But you respond, hear us and answer us. Lord, we call to you. Hear us and answer us. We give you thanks for all who have remained faithful to you, for all who have seen beyond the temporary to the eternal, for saints, martyrs, who have been our inspirations. We pray for the church where it is being persecuted, for all Christians afflicted or tortured for their faith. Lord, be a strength to all who are losing hope, to the faint-hearted and the fearful. Lord, we call to you. Hear us and answer us. God of peace, We pray for countries broken by war, for peoples facing ethnic violence and hatred, for all who are being discriminated against. We pray for the G7 leaders meeting this week, that they will seek to find justice for all your peoples. Lord, we call to you. We give thanks for those who have protected us, who have shielded us from harm or evil, who have enriched our lives by their their goodness. We pray for the police, the fire service, for all upon whom our security depends. Lord, we call to you, hear us and answer us. We pray for Emma and Max, Grazia and Joyce, that they may feel your love and support. We pray for areas where lives are wasting away, for the poor, the homeless, and the refugee, for all who suffer from mental illness and the disturbed and the violent, for all who have lost the will to live for the suicidal. Lord, we call to you, hear us and answer us. Lord, extend our vision. May we look beyond what we see to the eternal. We pray for all who see you in that glory, which is beyond measure. We remember loved ones departed, Ollie Oliver and Kathleen Madison, 
and their friends and families. Lord, we call to you. Hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand as you're able? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a socially distant sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in a garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet, in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. 
Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. 
Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. For details of the many events that are going on in the life of our church community and in our wider parish, please do try and stay in touch with us by looking at our website, following us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and sharing the stories you'll find there, particularly the reflections on truth and goodness and beauty that Francesco has been working on and by joining our email newsletter, News from St. Mary's, which you can find reflected on our website and all those social media accounts. This week, um, those will all highlight the fact that our book club is meeting on Tuesday for a discussion and reflection on Richard Coles's new book, The Madness of Grief. Tuesday's coming very soon now, but it's a very short book. So if you want to buy it on Kindle, get it delivered instantly, you will have time to read it before Tuesday. And if you haven't got time to read it, but you're interested in joining our book group, then do come along anyway, and you might be the person who gets to choose the book we read next month. Next week, on the 13th of June, as well as our more traditional 10 o'clock parish Eucharist, we have an all-age Eucharist at 4 p.m., that's a service specially designed for children and young families, and it's got a very crafty, messy sort of feeling, or at least as much mess as we're allowed to make in the current COVID-19 pandemic restrictions. If you'd like to come along to any of our services in person, as well as there's the opportunity to watch them online, please just contact Roger so that we can make sure we have plenty of space. As everyone who's in church this morning can attest, we do have plenty of room. So if you forget to contact Roger, don't let that stop you from coming along. Our news from St. Mary's email and our social media accounts and the website are also advertising the fact that the Christian creation care charity, Arocha, are providing a focus for the whole Church of England on creation at the moment. There are lots of online webinars and videos that Arocha are providing and curating and many opportunities to sign up to learn more about how we, as a whole denomination, as part of a global movement of all churches, are increasingly seeking to show our solidarity with and love of all creation. So please do seek out that opportunity to learn more about how we can develop our love of this planet and its resources, for it is loved by God. My final announcement this morning feels a little bit odd because it's about six months overdue. At the end of December, Margaret, our parish administrator, retired. But of course, at that time, we weren't able to have services in the church building and we decided, therefore, that we would delay presenting Margaret with an official leaving present until we were able to be back in church. I then thought of something that I knew Margaret would really like, and it's taken another four months to get hold of it. But this morning, since Margaret and Graham are here, I'd like to present to you, Margaret, with a leaving gift and to thank you so much for your service as our parish administrator. Um, Working without you for the last six months has given me an even greater awareness of how much you've contributed in that role, as well as the contribution you continue to make as a reader and an intercessor and a member of our choir. So, Margaret, I don't know if you're willing to come up to the front to be presented with your gift, but uh, that would be lovely so everyone can see it being handed over ever so carefully. And please do be careful with it too, because I tried to pick up the bag by its handles and they ripped.
Do be, put a hand underneath it, Margaret. There you go. And this is just a very small token of our appreciation. And you'll notice that these might go along with the PCCs present to you that um, might no longer exist. But John Savage very kindly arranged for a very good bottle of whiskey for, for Margaret and Graham. So they now have some very nice glasses. And I think this is the piece that's taken rather a while to arrange. Um, because poets are not very good always at getting back to you when you ask for a personal dedication. But um, <laughs> Margaret's a big fan of Malcolm Guite, and Malcolm was kind enough to not only send us uh, a copy of his latest book, but also to inscribe it to her as a token of the whole church's appreciation for your gifts in our service. Really Thank, Thank you, you, Margaret. Let's give Margaret a big round of applause for all that she's done and all that she's been part of our church. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> As Alex said, the PCC have already given me a very nice bottle of whiskey, which um, is no longer with us, but it had a very, <laughs> very happy death. Uh, and if this is what I think it is, that that will really help me to appreciate the next bottle of whiskey, um, even if it's Liddles. Uh, <laughs> and thank you so much for the thought that's gone into getting this and actually getting it signed. Uh, and if anyone hasn't read any Malcolm Geek, you're in for a real treat. You really are. He's, he's a wonderful poet. Um, I very much enjoyed being the parish administrator. I'm a bit kind of caught on the hop by this, but... Uh, uh, it's, uh, you see all sorts of things and you get to know all sorts of things and all the best stories can't be told, as they say. Um, but um, I wish all the best to the church in the future for whatever happens with administration here. Uh, <laughs> whether it's another person in post or whether you decide to do something else, I don't know. Um, and um, thank you again very much for everything you've done and particularly thank you to the wardens and Alec and all the other people who've stepped up to the office and helped when I screened help. So thank you. If you'd like uh, I should mention, by way of passing, if you'd like a sample of some of Malcolm's poetry, then we've used it in several services during the pandemic, in particular uh, around the time of Christmas and around the time of Easter in our services of music and reflections and readings. Um, there are several poems that Malcolm has composed, read beautifully, that are part of those services, and they're all still available uh, as this service will be on our YouTube channel. Would you please stand for our final blessing, as you are able. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.